Good evening, everyone. How are you? Baruch Hashem, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so yesterday we talked about the issue of having relations in the daytime, <clears throat> and um, says a bit Yosef regarding that. I call Beperk Kolayad, right? Where's the source for this? And you design a mudalef over there in the Gemara. Katua Yigal Meimoniot says I got this from Rabbi Perk Dalad Milchot Yom Yom Tov in the laws of uh, Yom Tov. So Tosfot says, right, that you see from here also that you're not allowed to have relations uh, with a candle, right, at night. Even if you, right, um, you know, cover yourself with a talit, with a blanket, whatever. Also the Rabbat says this. So you see from there, right, that <clears throat> there's two things which are similar. One is during the daytime, and the other one is the candle, right, uh, uh, at night. Okay, so let's see Shulchan Ruch, how he describes that, which is Yud Aleph, right? We'll see that. Yeah, so it says here, the Shulchan Aruch, Asur Shamesh Leor as we said, right, you're not allowed to have relations with a candle lighting in your room. Even if he uses a talit, right? So in other words, <coughs> when it comes to the daytime, apparently the talit can help you, you know? Uh, as we said, if he's a tamid chacham. But when it comes to the candle, it will not help you, right? So we have to understand why that is. Uh, so says the Ramah here, Aval im mechitza, asar So he says, right, if you make a partition, as we said with the Sefer Torah, same thing, right? Ten uh, Fahim, that will help you with the with the candle. So you see from there, right? This is exactly what we spoke about yesterday. <clears throat> what do you see from here? That it doesn't have to really pitch dark in the room, you know? Because you know the partition will not make it pitch dark. You'll see, you'll see, you'll still have some light in the room, even with a partition. But the thing is, you know, as we said, right, it won't be directly on you, and that's what we don't want, right? Uh, so therefore, right, uh, it's going to be okay. So 
So this explains it pretty well, you know, to understand what, what the parameters are here. Uh, so it says here, Afa Pisha look what it says, right? exactly what I told you. Even though you can see the light, right, through, you know, through the partition, you can see it. Kegon Sheif Sik Besadin, Share, Kenny Reilly says, nevertheless, it's allowed. You do have some light there in the room, you do. Kenny Reilly, Midive Rashi, Pet, Bet, the Mesachet Betzal. That's what it seems from Rashi says. Gamma Rinan, Atam, the Share, Misha Kofek, Li Alaner. So he says, right, another way to solve the problem would be to cover the candle, you know, with a utensil. Right? So obviously then you're not going to see the light. <clears throat> Something like that. Um, so that's another solution. That's good. Uh, and then he says, So now the question comes up, right? What about Shabbat? So why? Because on Shabbat you have a problem, right? If you got a candle lit in your room, you can't put it out on Shabbat. There's no way to put it out. Number one. Number two. Also, you know, the question is now: Can you make a partition on Shabbat? Or is this, uh, you know, uh, there's a, there's a prohibition with that? So he says, look over there, right in uh, chapter. 315, right? That's where he talks about this issue. So if I remember correctly, there is a way to do it on Shabbat, to make some kind of partition. Uh, that it won't be a problem with the, the issue of a building, you know, whatever, right? Or making a tent. So anyway, um, maybe we'll look at that building there, you know? Whatever, we'll see what happens, but anyway, it says in Shulchan Ruch, right? Furthermore, that's in Shin Tet Vav, Right, okay. Right. Also, we said, not allowed to have intercourse during the daytime, right? As we said, unless it's a dark room. That's what we said. Um, so here, it says Ramah here, So as we said, right, the Torah scholar, you know, he can use a, a blanket, cover himself with a blanket, right? Uh, or something like that. So the question is, why can't you do that when it comes to the issue of uh, the candle? So let's look at the Mishnah Brewer. Maybe explains, right, what the difference is between uh, the daytime and the candle. Apparently, you would think it's the same thing. Okay. So let's see that. <laughs>
doesn't really explain it. Interesting. Biru Halakha. Let's see my opinion. What it says, Biru Halakha. Biru Halakha. No, it doesn't really explain it. Very interesting. There's one more. There's also Magen Abraham here. Let's see what Magen Abraham says. No, don't see nothing. So maybe we should look back at the Bet Yosef. Maybe he explained something there. Maybe. Let's see, maybe we missed it. Yeah, so he brings that, you know, he brings the, the halakha, but doesn't bring the reason for it. Okay, so you know what? Maybe I'll I'll look into that. I'll check it out, you know, and see what what the poskim say about the the, the going to the sources a little bit. Okay, interesting. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, next one says, you bet, Asur l'shamesh mitato b'shnat re'avon ve'lo l'chashuche banim. Chashuche banim, right? So, what does that mean? That, um, not allowed to have relations with your wife during a famine. Right? Unless, uh, he doesn't have any children at all. If he's childless, we allow it, you know, because, uh, after all, he has to do the mitzvah of having children, you know? So that supersedes uh, this issue. But otherwise, you should not, right? So you may think, you know, like, I, how, do I, how do I cut this down? You know, like, you know, how do I cut it out? Like, you know, I'm human. Like, um, how do I, you know, how do I, uh, right, uh, practice celibacy, you know? <laughs> how, do I, how do I do that? Um, so, you know, I guess the answer is that because it's a famine, you know, going on, you know, so you, there's not, not much food to eat, you know, so you're not really in the mood for sex, you know, it's, not really, it's the last thing on your mind, you know, when this happens. You know, we haven't seen that in our in our lifetime, you know, this kind of thing, you know, but in the old days, they used to have famines, you know, there was like, you know, no food to eat. God save us, right? Hashem help us, what can I tell you? So when you're in a situation like that, you know, nobody's thinking about sex, you know, they're thinking about survival. I'll give you an example, you know, like how that is. 
let's say a person is sick, you know, right? He's ill, you know? So he's in the hospital, you know, whatever, right? Is he thinking about sex, you know, when he's in the hospital? No, because he's sick, you know, he's weak. He doesn't, his body can't, doesn't function right properly. So that's, that's the last thing on his mind, you know? <laughs> Same thing in a famine, you know? You're not thinking about that. That's the thing. Um, so I guess it's um, pretty clear. <clears throat> so that says with yourself, what's the source for this? A perk kama de taniot, right? The first perk of tanit. Yudalaf Hamudalaf, right? That's where it says this. And uh, where do we learn this from, by the way, the Salacha? We learn this from Yosef Hatzadik, right? That uh, it says, right, in the in the Chumash, if you look there, uh, when he had children, you know, Ephraim and Menashe, he had them, it says in the Chumash, he had them before the famine, right? But so the says the Talmud, you see that from the famine and onwards, he didn't want to have children, you know, right? That's why he stopped. So he had them before the famine, and then he stopped. Uh, yeah, that's that's the story. So we learned from there, you know, this whole thing. I remember I saw recently, you know, when I was learning Zohar, said in Zohar Kadosh, that um, if a person had, does this, you know, has children during time of famine, so it says, right, that it's a time of judgment, you know, you know strong judgment in heaven. So therefore, what happens is they give him like a soul, you know, which comes from the bad side, you know, the evil side, you know. So that's another thing you have to consider that if you're going to have children, you know, during the famine, they may turn out to be, you know, really bad people, you know. So, you know, you don't want that, right? You, know, you don't need that headache. So, you know. Therefore, avoid it. Right? We shouldn't see from it, right? Uh, you know, whatever. We've seen a lot of bad things, you know, but famine we haven't seen. Baruch Hashem. Thank God. Okay. Today we have uh, terrorism, you know. <laughs> that's, that's our, uh, right, uh, this is the vice of the generation, whatever, right, the, the tragedy. You know, terrorists, you know, all kinds of crazy people. Killers. Okay, so that's the story there, right? So uh, let's see Shulchan Ruch here. You bet. Okay. <laughs> so it says here um, that Shulchan Ruch Asur Shamesh Mitzato B'Shnei Ravon as we said right you're not allowed to have relations during famine time Ela Lechashuche Banim unless you have no children so then you have to do the mitzvah of having children you know uh, that's something else Chashuche Banim so it says here in the Ramah so says the Ramah, right, it's also, it says in parentheses, I'm not sure if this is Ramah, but whoever it is, it says here that it also applies to other, you know, types of calamities like that, you know, which are similar to famine, you know. You shouldn't have relations during that time. That's interesting, you know. So he brings this from Yerushalmi, you know, wow. Right. So I guess that would, you know, according to this opinion, we would include also, like, let's say, you know, it's a time of like war, you know, like, uh, you know, World War Two, you know, and where, you know, everybody was dying, you know, like left and right, you know. So uh, when you're in a situation like that, you know, it's not the time to be, you know, having have, having sex, you know, it's the last thing on your mind. But I'm not talking about the Americans, you know, because we didn't experience the war over here in America, you know. There was no war over here. Thank God. You know, but in Europe, you know, things were really bad. Okay, so, yeah, something like that, right? Um, I guess you could compare one with the other. Okay, very good. So let's go to Yud Gimbal. That was Yud Bet. Right, this is an interesting one, an important one also to understand. So let's get into it. Let's dig into it. Yeah. Yud Gimel, right? 
So it says the tour, the Achsenai Asura Shamesh, right? Also, when you go, you know, as a guest, right? You're, you're lodging somewhere, you know? You shouldn't have sex there in that place, right? So what are we talking about? We're talking about a hotel, right? Or, uh, you know, you're like, you know, you went to sleep over somebody's house, right? Uh, husband and a wife, you know? So you shouldn't have sex there, you know, when you're lodging as a guest. Okay. So we have to get into this whole thing, right? Why that is and what's the reason. So uh, it says over here, right? In the Bet Yosef, Pesopek Alpha P, right? Where's the source for this? In Ketubot, Samechi Amud Aleph. Katav Ravad, says Ravad, Besefer Bala Nefesh, Mistaber, Sheim Yachadu Lo Ulishto, Bait Mutar, Vilvad Shelo Yeshen Betalito, Shel Bala Bait. Oh, interesting, right? So he says, right, that um, it says that if they give you a special room, you know, to sleep in, like your own separate room, so he says, right, then you can do it. Why? Because you have privacy, you know? So you see, right, that the problem is, you know, that when you're by, you know, when you're lodging by somebody else, you know, you have no privacy there. Uh, so, you know, it's like kind of like embarrassing, you know, to do that in, in, in somebody else's place. Uh, but if you have your own room, right, that's okay. Why? Because, you know, then uh, you're, you know, nobody's watching you, right? Uh, so, you know, you're in private. But he says, nevertheless, you should, you know, have your own, right? Uh, how do we call this? Bed, your 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 own bedware, right? Bed sheets, whatever, right? So what, what does that mean, right? That we don't want, you know, the, you know, when they come to clean your bed, you know, your host, right? Whatever, you're lodging there. We don't want them to see, see, you know, like your sheets are all wet, you know, from, you know, from sex, you know, I mean, the, it's not, it's not respectable, right? So therefore, right, uh, what you should do is bring your own, you know? <laughs> so what does that mean, right? The, a good solution would be, you know, to bring like a towel, you know, and put it on, you know, put it on top of the sheet. This way the towel, you know, will absorb, you know, the, uh, all the moisture, you know, from the sex, whatever, and you'll be okay, you know, that'll be all right, you know? So if you can do it like that, it's fine. That's what we're saying, you know? Okay, great. So there is a solution, you know? There's a solution for everything, you know? <laughs> As they say, right? Okay. Very good. So let's see Shukhan Ruch. <clears throat> so it says in Shukhan Ruch again, right? Same thing. Achsenai Asura Shamesh, right? The the, um, the lodger, right, is not allowed to have sex, right, there in the play where he's lodging. But it says if they have a separate room, right? But he says, right, don't use the right the, the sheets, you know, whatever, right? Don't get the sheets wet. And that's pretty much what we're saying, right? So bring your own, you know, bring like a towel or something, you know, put something on top. Cover it, right? Then you're good. You're good to go, right? Whatever. Right? That's all good. Okay, great. That's your gimbal. Let's go to your Dalit. Right, so now he brings uh, this Ramban, right, which is famous for its uh, right hard-hitting language here. So you guys got to hear this, you know, listen carefully. This Ramban. Let's get into it. So look what the Ramban says, right? He says, um, <laughs> very strong language, you know, very descriptive over here, right? It gets right, you know, cuts right through the, right, the, all, all the, you know what. So, right, uh, it says here, cuts through the nonsense, right? What does it say, right? So it says like this, Katab Ramam Zal, right? Shikhbat Zera U Koha Guf, right? So he says, the sperm, right, of the man, right, is the, is the strength of his body, you know? That's what they call today, you know, testosterone, right? In other words, if a man has testosterone flowing through his body, he, you know, that's that's what gives him the strength, the masculine, you know, quality, right, of strength. That's what we're talking about, right? So, uh, 
says also right this is what gives you proper vision you know uh you know uh, that you have testosterone in your body the whole man should of dim so it says right what happens is that when a person has too much sex right so he's losing a lot of sperm you know so what happens is right that that reduces his testosterone level you know and uh because of that right it it, it destroys his body you know right you know makes him into a you know, a, a, a basket case, whatever you want to call it. Right? He, he becomes very weak, you know, from that. So he says, and really, you know, you know what this happens? You know, this kills him, you know, basically, right? It's a killer, you know, when you're having too much sex. This is the problem with too much sex, you know, especially for a man, right? That's, the, that's what we're talking about. A woman, you know, doesn't really lose much from sex, you know. Uh, for them, it's actually very good for their body. You know, but for a man, you know, too much sex is it's deadly. So you gotta watch out for that. Um, okay, so um <clears throat> it says because man should to say built go for color behind them, the Usha Mar Shlomo Bechobato Alti Ten Lanishim Mechalecha. Right, so it says that's what Shlomo, right, uh, King Solomon said. In his uh, book, right, the Mishle, right, Proverbs, he says there, don't give your strength to women, right? What does that mean? You know, stop, you know, being crazy for sex, you know, all the time. You know what I mean? Because the women will take all your strength, you know, because you're always losing your, your testosterone, you know? It's going down the tubes. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, says, right? This is the Talmud. Whoever you know has too much sex, what happens is that he he ages prematurely. You know, becomes like an old man. You know, like he's you know he's like you know fifty and he looks like he's seventy. <laughs> what happened to you, sir? You know, like, you know, you look like a senior citizen. You're only fifty years old. You know? uh, too much sex. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, you know. You were having too much sex in your life, you know? That's the problem. The kochotasha, so it says it also weakens his body, right? As we said, and also he loses his, uh, he loses, you know, his uh, vision, right? In other words, his vision becomes uh, defective, you know, like, uh, you know, weaker, right? He needs bifocals, he needs focals, you know, these focals, those focals, right? Uh, they're not into it, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's, uh, you know, he's getting new glasses every year, you know, and more stronger, you know, because of this reason. You know what I mean? He's losing his vision, poor guy. Right? Um, so he said, also, it gives him bad breath. Can you imagine all this? Right? So it says, it also caused him to lose his hair, right? So what does that mean? He loses his head hair. And also, eyelashes and eyebrows. He loses, you know, because of too much sex. Uh, okay. But he says, on the other hand, right, there are parts of the body where, you know, there's more hair because of this. Where is that? On his beard, right? On his underarms, right? And his um, his legs. And so you see from there, right, it causes all kinds of reactions. This thing, you know, um, the shinab no flow. Also, it says he loses his teeth. Also, can you imagine? Loses his teeth, you know. So sometimes you wonder why people have dentures. You know, this is the, this is the reason why. Okay, that no uh, flow. So he says. Also, he says he gets pains on his body. You know, because of this. You know, so he's got aches, pains, you know, back back pains, this pain, that pain, right? God knows, right? What? You know what I mean? All because of too much sex. Right? Which sounds like, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it sounds like America, basically. You know, because people are so sick, you know, when they're, when they get older, you know, they're so ill, you know, and it's partially because of this, you know, too much sex. I mean, the the then their bodies is weak is weakened by that, you know. 
That's what's going on. As we said, right, this only applies to the men, you know. The women don't, it doesn't weaken their body to have sex. It's just good for them, actually. So they don't lose nothing, you know. But, you know, also the woman has to take in consideration, you know, her husband. You know what I mean? Like, your husband is not a toy, you know what I mean? Like, you know, so don't don't try to you know, like use him like five times a day, you know. Uh, take it easy, you know. He's only human, for God's sakes. <laughs> so, <laughs> you got to have mercy on your husband, you know. Okay. So, I remember when I was a kid, you know, there was this, like, Spanish guy, you know, who was, uh, you know, goy, right? Not a, not a Jew, right? So, you know, he was my neighbor here, you know? So, he was, like, well, 17 years old, you know, whatever, 18. So, you know, he told me, you know, one time he just tells me, says, you know, he says, I have, like, sex five times a day. I was, like, looking at him, are you, are you serious? Five times, five times a day he has sex. You know, so what do you expect your body to be? You know, when you're when you're you know when you're already getting older, right? You, it's gonna you you're gonna shoot your body down to the down down the tubes, like that. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay. So it goes on the round bomb here, right? Uh, continues. Uh, right? So he says, the doctors said, look at this, the doctors, right? The doctors say. So he says, if you take a survey, right? thousand people who died. So he says, 999 of those people died because of too much sex, over, over, over sex, you know? This is the cause of their death. What can I say? And he says, one is from some other purpose. Some other reason. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Think about that for a second. He himself was a doctor of the Rambam, right? So he knew what he was talking about. This is incredible. Okay, so it goes on, right? So he says, therefore, you got to be careful, you know? Just watch yourself, you know what I mean? Don't, don't go too far. It, uh, if he wants to be healthy, right? You want to be a healthy guy? Don't, 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 don't do too much sex. You know? right? Okay, good. By the way, it says in the Talmud, you know, like this. It says, when it comes to, you know, to several things in life, you know, too much is no good and too little is no good. So sex is one of them, you know? Too little sex is not good. You know, it's not good for the body that there's no sex whatsoever. Because the sex, you know, makes the body function good, you know. It it kind of like accelerates, you know, the uh right the uh you know the, the, the vigor of the body, you know. Uh, so you need to have uh, you know some sex on the right. So no sex is not healthy for the body, but also right, too much sex is also not healthy. So you gotta be in the middle, you know, with sex, you know, not too little, not too much. Medium, you know, go, go easy, you know, take it easy, right? Have a good time, you know, enjoy, right? But uh, don't uh, don't go to the extremes. Yeah, that's the idea. Didn't you also tell us though that Torah study you can go without sex if, if you have uh, enough Torah study? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's an interesting thing, right? So here's the thing, right? That, yeah, it's it's a good question. You know what you're asking. So the truth is, you know, I can tell you from different halachot that we learn. You know about that issue. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, if you learn in Eben Ezra, you know, Shulchan Ruch, it talks over there about, uh, you know, laws of, uh, you know, marriage, right? Things like this, right? So it says there that um, a young man, right, should get married at the age of 18. This is the age, you know, that a, that a man should, you know, a young man should marry. And that's until 22, right? After 22, he's already, you know, He's past, you know, his, his, he's past due. He's got a big problem there, right? He shouldn't have waited that long to get married. So it says there, right, that a person who's learning Torah, like you said, right, can wait, you know, uh, more, more than 18. Why? Because, you know, the Torah regards them, you know, from bad thoughts and all kinds of things, right? But here's the thing, you know, this doesn't work with everybody. 
You know, so what does that mean? There are some people, you know, who learn, uh, but still, you know, they have bad thoughts. You know, that they, they have their their you know their mind is going. You know, all kinds of movies going on in there. It's all kinds of bad stuff, right? His imagination is running away with him. And uh, especially in our times, you know, that they're watching pornography, things like this, you know, which is terrible. You know, we spoke about this already a couple of times, right? Pornography, how harmful it is. You gotta stay away from that stuff. You want to destroy your life? Watch pornography, right? It's a good way to, to, to self-destruct. If you're interested in that, right, uh, go <laughs> go for it, right? Uh, I mean, I'm joking, but right, you, you see the point. So anyway, right, the, the point is that there are some men who, you know, even if they're learning, they cannot really, you know, avoid bad thoughts. Um, so therefore, a person like that, you know, the poskim say, he should marry early, you know, and not wait. Uh, because, you know, he just can't, he can't overcome it, you know. So what I'm trying to tell you is like this, right? Not everybody can overcome that problem. Some people can, you know, some people cannot. So you got to know who you are and what you are, you know, and go according to your uh, situation. I mean, the problem is, you know, when you're an 18-year-old, you know, young man, right, whatever, you know, the, the Yetzirah is very big, you know, it's like, you got a problem, you know, like it's it's like a big lion, you know, like weighing down on you, you know, you got a big lion on your shoulder there, you know, so <laughs> it's, you know, you got to watch out for this lion, you know, I mean, he can kill you, this thing, this guy, you know, so not everybody can control that, you know, so the truth is, in our times, you know, I, I think we're even we're even worse off most of us cannot control bad thoughts, you know. Uh, so therefore, that's why Maran, my Rabbi Asher, Maran, Rabbi he used to tell people, you know, listen, if you want to study Torah, you know, get married early, and then you know, go into a kollel, right? And the kollel will pay you something, you know, some, you know, some uh, some nickels and dimes they'll pay you, right? And you'll be able to live, you know, whatever. So, you know, you can get by, right? Uh, better to do it that way, you know, nowadays. In the old days, you know, they didn't have kolels that paid you like that. They, they didn't have things like that, you know. Uh, so therefore, there was no choice, you know. If you wanted to learn, you had to not get married and wait. Because why? Once you get married, you got to support your wife. You got to support your family. How are you going to do that if you have no money? You know, if you have no job, nothing, right? So, you know, that's the whole thing, right? So it, it's a little bit, you know, tricky. You know, you got to you gotta know yourself, like where you're holding with that, you know. So it doesn't always work that uh that thing, you know, but of course, a person who learns Torah, you know, it will guard him somewhat, you know, like in other words, uh, you know, it'll guard him, but in, it just may not be 100%, you know, uh, regarding the bad thoughts and stuff like that, you know, uh, it may guard him, you know, it'll be, it may be strong enough to guard him from sinning, you know, he won't sin, maybe he won't like, you know, go with some prostitute, you know, he won't do that, but, you know, it'll, you know, but still he'll have thoughts, you know, which is also very harmful, you know. It says in the Talmud, by the way, that the bad thoughts are even more harmful than its sin itself. Right? So, you know, you got to watch out with that. You got to be careful. So there you go, right? That's the answer to your question. I hope I, you know, it, uh, I, I clarified that. Anyway, right, uh, getting back to what we said. <clears throat> so Raman goes on here, right, to, with this issue. Right? Um, This Rambam is very important to understand, you know, especially for a man, you know, but, uh, you know, if you're a wife, you know, you have to also know this about your husband, all these things, right? How to, you know, how to protect him from harm, you know, <laughs> from harming himself, you know, whatever, right? So, uh, okay, so, right, so the words, right, go, Rambam goes on here. Um, So therefore, the Rambam says, right? So when is, in other words, according to this, right? Uh, you know, we're talking about here a physical issue, right? Just you know. So the Rambam says, when should you when should you have sex? So he says you should you should do it when you feel like strong, you know, and and healthy, right? Uh, so in other words, if you feel weak, you really should not be having sex, you know. Um, like you know, la I can tell you, like myself, you know, like last year when I was sick, you know, at this time last year I was in the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> I'm talking to you right now, right? At this time last year I was in the hospital. Believe me, you know, I, I, you know, I was so weak, you know, at, at some points, you know, that, that when I was sick, I, you know, 
forget it. I mean, I was I was way too weak, you know, to, to even think about that. So, you know, that's not the time for sex, you know, when you're sick, you know, and your body's very weak. That's what the Ramam is telling you here. Right? Uh, so, okay, let's go on. So he says, right, that... Um, Right, so because he's strong, you know, and healthy, he also gets erections, you know. In other words, like you know, he sees right, he's getting erections all the time. So when he sees that symptom, right, what does that mean? Time to have the sex, you know, right? to find, find your wife, you know, and do what you have to do, right? <laughs> that's what that's what it means, right? Shalom uh, right? Um, Masech right? So in other words, he's not trying to have erections, you know, he's not doing it on purpose, right? Because as we said, right, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to, you know, bring yourself to erection on purpose, you know, and that's why one of the reasons why watching pornography is so harmful, because that's what it does to you, you know. Uh, but, right uh, anyway, right, he's not trying to do that. It just it's happening by itself. Right, so that means you know it's time to go, right? Uh, you know, right? Masiach atzmo l'davar acher v'kishu kishem ibanse kovid matna ulmata. So he says he also feels, you know, like um, a certain, you know, like. Heaviness, you know, in his, um, in his, um, in his uh, waist, you know, in his thigh area, you know, when he's when he needs to have sex, you know, he feels pressure there, you know, like something like that, right? Some kind of pressure. He's like about to explode, you know, basically, right? If you know, if you're a man, you know what that means. Right? Uh, ladies may not understand that. <laughs> it's it's a man's thing, you know, whatever, right? So, whatever it is, right? You feel like you know you you're really like you know overloaded, you know, so you gotta you know you gotta do what you have to do. So the Akshayim and So he says also his body is like very heated up, you know, it's like the temperature is getting high. Because you know, he's very excited, you know, he is he's ready to go, you know, right? You know, he's so that's the time to have sex, you know, when you have a situation like that. That's what the Rambam is telling you. Not when you're when you're weak and frail, you know, and you have a fever, you know, and a flu, you know. That's not the time for sex, you know. You gotta know right everything, uh, the proper the proper time for everything, right? Uh, so okay. The law of all the savea vera right. Also another thing, right? Because that's already a different halacha. So let's see first this one, right? Then the bit Yosef Shulchanuch, and then we'll see what we can do. Okay. Let's see Bet Yosef. So, yeah, it says Bet Yosef, he just brings a place of the Rambam, right? Where is this? Perk Dalet Minchot Deot, right? In the fourth perk of the laws of Deot, right? What is Deot? Character traits. So that's how I translate it. I don't know, whatever. Everybody has his own translation. Okay, so that's the story there. Um, so let's see Shulchan Ruch, right? And we'll see. So Shesh right? Uh, the, the, the this whole thing with the Rambam, right? Again, Sheikh Vatzera Kocha Guf, right? So he says, right, the, the sperm in the per, man's body is his strength. As we said, we call that today testosterone, right? You know, he's got testosterone in his body. Right? Uh, so that's what gives him the strength in his body and also his vision, right? So when he has too much sex, right, and losing too much sperm, losing testosterone, right? So what happens is, right, that, that kills the body, right? Becomes weak, becomes frail, right? Becomes sick, you know, all kinds of stuff like that, right? It says, oh, whoever does too much sex, right? We know what happens, right? He pre ages prematurely, as we said. And the, 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 the rabbis of the Talmud, you know, they learn this from a story which is brought down in um, the book of Shmuel, right? Shmuel Bet. Over there, it talks about this guy, Barzilai Hagil Adi, right? Who was uh, somebody who helped King David when he was running away, right? From from uh, his uh, right, his enemies. So Barzilai, right? Uh, you know, gave him, brought him some food to eat and stuff, all kinds of stuff. Gave him provisions, right? So this guy Barzilai, they say, you know, he, he was from the tribe of Menashe, you know. But they say he was uh, he was this guy was too much into sex, you know. He was having too much sex, you know. So because of that, you know, he, he it says there, right, that he was very old, you know, even though he wasn't, 
in terms of the age, he wasn't very old, but he was he aged prematurely. Why? Too much sex, right? That's what happened to him, you know. So that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> okay. Good. Um they're not killed, right? So as we also says he gets bad breath. The Sarah Shoga, what right? He also loses his hair in certain areas, right? The eye, eyebrows, eyelids, right, and also the head. But it says on the on his legs, there's more on the on the beard, right, and also on the uh, right uh, underarms. Bishinav no short, right? Also teeth fall out. Right? So also he's lots of aches on his body, right? He gets you know all kinds of pains, you know whatever. And uh, we see this, you know, like uh, in America, you know, it's so common these things, you know, like. People are have so so much pain in their body, you know. They have problems with their teeth. They have problems here, problems there. So right, you see, right, it comes from this. This is the this is the main main, main culprit for this pro these problems. So it says, uh, besides this, you know, all kinds of problems he has, right? Health problems, health issues. He gets weak. Right, His eyes, you know, get dim. We said this already. I'm, I'm just repeating it. I'm sorry. Let's go on. So he says, um, so he says, right, the doctor said, right, if you have so he says, right, that if you have a thousand people, 999, right, they died because of too much sex. Oh, my God. So therefore he says, you got to be careful with that, right? So let's be careful. All right, there you go, right? Let's be careful with that. Let's not abuse our bodies. Okay, very good. So I guess we'll continue next time, Bezat Hashem. There's still uh, some more things to do, right? Hopefully we'll wrap it up, uh, this chapter. Uh, right, tomorrow is Thursday. Maybe we'll we'll try to finish it tomorrow. Right, we'll see what happens. So Bezat Hashem, we'll see you. Uh, thanks for coming. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. We'll see you tomorrow, Bezad Hashem, the last day of the week here for the, for the learning. And uh, all right, so enjoy yourself, right, and uh, stay healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rabbi. God bless.